Here are 10 features where Coda is 10 times better than Notion. Click on the link in the video description to see the full blog post. Here we go. Number one, Coda has easier to write formulas. To show this, we have two tables here, a sales table and a customer's table. We want to look in our customer's table to find the customer sales associated with the given customer ID. So in the customer sales column, I have a formula that simply reads the sales table, filtering where the customer ID and the sales table equals the customer ID and the customer's table. And then I pull back the total sales column, which is this column right here. And you get the customer sales column as a formula. In Notion, you have to first set up a sales relation, which is this column right here, a relation column type. And then you have a separate column that looks at the sales relation and pulls back the total sales column from that sales table. So it's not really a formula. It just requires two steps to pull back, pull out the sales total sales column from the sales table. A more simple example is looking at this formula right here for whether or not this customer name equals Alice or not. So if I look at the formula here, it's a simple if statement of if the customer name equals Alice, yay. If not, then nay. In Notion, it's a little more tricky to write because you have to know to write the prop name in front of the column name before you can write out the full if statement. So that's how formulas are a little easier to write in Coda. Formulas in tables in Coda just do a little more than formulas in tables in Notion. In this case, I want to show a formula where the I want to show if the customer sales is the highest or the lowest in all customer sales, or if it's not the highest or lowest, just show NA. The Coda formula here is edit formula, and I do a switch statement where I look at the customer sales column, which is this column. And if it's the max sale, I put the word high. If it's the lowest sale, I put the word low. And then other than that, I just put NA. To do this same formula in Notion, for the in their Notion table, I have to do this formula right here, where I convert the customer sales number uh, column to a number first, and I see if the max sales equals high, and if the max sales and if the min sales is low, but I have to create separate columns for max sales and min sales. So to dig deeper into this, I have a max sales column, and this formula is a separate formula. Oh, sorry, it's a relation to the all sales uh, relation. I'm looking at total sales and I'm looking at for the max value and I'm showing that the max value is 200, 100 for the minimum sales. And that's how I'm able to look, use this formula to find the max and min sales. But I have to create these two separate columns in the code, in the notion table to get max and min sales in order to write this long if statement. So we have this long if statement versus a more easy to read concise switch statement that has a few lines. In Coda, you have automations that can handle recurring tasks and reminders. Automations are kind of like a robot that just does things for you every single day, every single week. And you can see these automations by clicking on the gear icon, automations, and you can set up these rules where a rule is triggered every Monday or every Tuesday, set up a certain time. And then every time that time comes, you can set a condition to do something. It could be click a button, set a value to some other, set a column to a certain value. And you can also do more steps after that. A good example of this is the robot PM template by Flatiron School. This uh, product manager basically created this template where you can uh, send out a list of projects and their statuses and what's due by um, using an automation that sends it using the Gmail pack to send out this email. And you can write all this right in Coda and it sends an email to the people listed in your, um, on your team. In Notion, there's no such thing as automations right now. Um, there are a bunch of workarounds you can use. A great blog post to read is this one from Thomas Frank. And it's kind of a workaround for how you can do recurring tasks. Um, using formulas, and there's also a video from Marie Poulin talking about recurring tasks with the Notion and how she manages it within her Notion workspace. Number four, 
Full integrations with third-party services. In Coda, the integrations are called packs, and the key difference here is that these packs allow you to see your data in a table in Coda, but also you can take actions from a Coda doc right into the other third-party app. So for instance, in Google Calendar, you can see your calendar events. You can also create new events from your Coda doc by pressing buttons. And there are many different packs here created by Coda and by the community for all kinds of professional and personal use cases. The Gmail pack, for instance, allows you to send emails from Coda, view emails in Coda, and more. The Yelp pack allows you to see data from Yelp listings in Coda. This is an example of a doc with the Yelp pack where you can see the restaurant name, the tags, the price, photos, all this kind of stuff in a structured table and you can filter and sort the data right in Coda. In Notion, there are integrations with various apps like Asana, GitHub, Jira, Google Drive, and a few others by the community. But the key difference here is that the integrations only allow you to import data or to just view a rich preview of data. So this is a Trello integration and you can only view cards and rich previews of the data um, like this. But the ability to view this data in tables is not available right now or databases that's coming as of March, 2022. The other option is you can look at third-party services like Notion integrations, which allow you to see data in your databases in Notion. But if you have any questions or need support, you'll have to contact the Notion integrations team and not Notion's team directly. You have buttons that actually look like buttons and just do stuff. In this table right here, I have a list of customers I want to call, and I have a column that is a button column type. And when I click on this button, all it does is it just checks off this call check column and I can just click that again to uncheck it. And it allows me to change data in whatever row I'm in. And I can even hide this column to just make things a little tidier and neater like that. So buttons can actually do stuff and they change data and it just makes things a little more interactive. Or I can have buttons right in the dock like this, a big giant button, I can click on this and it just marks um, all of my rows as called. I can also have even simpler lightweight buttons like these guys right here. These are called reactions where I can just click on the reaction to indicate that I read something, that I acknowledge something, that I approve something, a very simple way to show your approval or that you've done something on the doc. In Notion, there's really no such thing as buttons. The closest is, th is these template buttons, which allow you to make copies of a template that you've built within your Notion workspace or within a page. And you can repeat this on a table or database in Notion. There's also, again, third-party websites that have been built, like this one called Indify, where you can create your, I believe they have a button widget. But again, if you have any questions or concerns about setting up your buttons, you'd have to contact the people behind Indify versus the Notion team directly. Number six, Coda has a formula editor where you can have a lot of white space to write formulas that has line breaks, spaces, and even tabs. If you remember back to our customers table, we have this formula right here where I'm looking at the highest sales and lowest sales and I put the word high or low. You notice how I can actually have new line breaks in my formula editor to make just things a little more tidy when I'm writing out a really long like nested if statement. I can even expand this to have a bigger formula editor where I can just kind of have a lot of white space to write my formula out and not have things word wrap around. In Notion, everything is just on one long line. So if you have a really long formula like this, it just kind of runs off into another line and it's a little hard to see how this formula works. So having a big formula editor with line spaces and breaks just makes things easier to debug in the future when you have to inherit a formula from a colleague. In Coda, you can have a detailed layout when expanding a specific row in a table. This is really useful when you have a really big table and there's a bunch of columns and you only want to show the columns that are relevant to your teammate or colleague when they open up that row to inspect the details. So let's say I have this row right here in my customer's table. I want to see this in detail view. And when I open this row, I can put columns side by side. I can put them all on its own line. And I can do this all by customizing the layout here by clicking edit layout. And this gives you a more custom view 
to show data that looks and feels a little more user-friendly. In Notion databases, you have the ability to open a column as a page. And when I do that, you can see all the data associated with that specific row, but you can only move things up and down um, here. You can hide these properties if you want to, but you can't really move things side to side. You can't adjust the, f the um, look and feel of the labels or the font sizes. So it's a little more restrictive in terms of how you present your data to your teammates or colleagues. This is a little small sorting animation that shows up in Coda tables, and this is really useful when you have Zoom meetings in Coda. The voting table is one of the most popular templates in Coda. You can see I have four different ideas here that I'm being that are maybe being discussed during a meeting, and various people have voted on which idea they like the most. So far, there's a tie between idea one and two. If I click and tap on my vote for ID number two, let's see what happens to the table. I click tap, and you notice how this kind of highlights a little bit. And if I click out, the table automatically resorts to show that ID number two went to the top because it has the most number of votes. In Notion, you can sort tables as well. Currently, I have this sorted by customer ID, which is one, two, and three. Let's say I change this customer number to five. And you notice how like it automatically switches Alice down to the last row. If I change this to be number one, it kind of resorts right away and it moves this to number, Jane to number one. So there's not as much of an animation and it kind of abruptly sorts the table, which may not be as interactive or engaging during a meeting when you want to, people to be able to quickly upvote um, ideas to see what goes to the very top of the list. Number nine. You might have some decent cost savings when using a team plan with bigger teams on Coda versus Notion. Just from looking at the pricing websites, you'll see that Coda's team plan is $36 per month per DocMaker. And for Notion, it's $10 per month per user on the if you're getting billed monthly. Now, it seems like Notion is much cheaper just from looking at the two prices, but the devil's in the details. So let's say you're on a big team of 200 people cross-functionally people want to use Notion and you have 200 people and out of those 200 people, let's say 75, you want 75 team members to be able to use Notion. So that's going to be $750 per month, which is a decent amount if you're on a you know smaller team or smaller company, but may not be that much for a big enterprise. So if 75 people, the extra 125 people on the team might just be guests. These are unlimited guests in Notion who only need access to specific pages. Team members can create pages, create workspaces, etc. On Coda, you may not need 75 doc makers because of the fact that unlimited Coda always has unlimited editors and viewers. They are always free. So an editor actually has really powerful capabilities. They can create pages, they can create formulas, they can share stuff. And out of your team of 200, maybe you might only need 10 doc makers, like one per team. And that would equate to 36, $360 per month for 10 doc makers. And the 190 people that are in the company could just be an editor or even a viewer because editors, all they can do is they can also create pages, they can create formulas and do almost everything a doc maker can do except for um, create docs. Coda has native forms and support for forms built directly into the product, whereas Notion, there aren't native forms and you have to use third party services. Coda forms look and feel similar to Google Forms or Typeform. You can customize them any way you want. And more importantly, if you have any issues with your form, you can contact our uh, customer support team and they can answer any questions you have about the forms. On the Notion side, you have third-party, again, companies and developers who have created Notion Forms. For instance, for instance, this one is called Notion Forms. And it's a pretty lightweight product as well. But if you want to use this for more advanced use cases, you'll have to pay for like a pro plan or maybe even enterprise plan. So it's going to be a little more expensive on top of your Notion plan. Uh, more importantly, if you have any issues, you'll have to most likely contact the Notion Forms team, which is not associated with the Notion uh, company, so it's a different support team that would handle your requests. 
So those are my top 10 features where Coda is 10 times better than Notion. Of course, I am very biased because I am a Coda employee. So take whatever I said in this video with a grain of salt. However, if you want to read some more unbiased reviews, I would take a look at this competitor comparisons collection in the Notion Reddit. Um, I linked to this in the blog post in the video description, but you can see a variety of threads about Notion versus Coda in 2020 and in 2021, I believe there's somewhere down here, but you can see general comments about comparing Notion versus Coda from just regular users on Reddit. And I really like this comment, which I call out in the blog post, which talks about a lot of the same features I mentioned in the video, like creating a button, using the formula um, editor and detailed layouts, sending emails, this is using packs. So a bunch of features I mentioned are also mentioned in this um, Reddit thread as well.